Welcome to the Boston Art Podcast. I am Brian Huntress. I'm Theodora Earthworms. And this is the episode. Woo! Alright, we're recording now. Woo! This is going to... We're only going to record for a minute right now. Only a minute? This is something I want to talk to you about. Okay. Fuck, how the fuck do I get back to where we were going? <laughs> we were about to go do an interview, but then the interviewee canceled. Yeah. It's okay. Shit it happens. is what it is. We were only on the highway on the way there to the place. <laughs> 15 minutes before. That's okay. I'm just kidding. We probably should have um, followed up, though. I forgot. I just wanted to talk to you about a phenomenon. All right. That we see time and time again in the, in the arts. Interesting. Occasionally in music, not as much, mostly in fine art. Okay. Tell me why there are... Okay, take an artist. Do you know who David Cho is? I don't. Okay. He is an American artist. He is like LA based. He's a little like he's a little bit older, like kind of like Gen X 90s LA artist. Yeah. Very well established, really well known. Very big social media following. The guy's like been in movies, he's on podcast. Like like everybody knows who this fucking guy is. Like, he is 100% known. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Then, and we have artists like... Who's like an internet artist of the millennial age? An internet artist? That isn't... That wouldn't be in a museum. Ghosted 1996. Whoever that is. Okay. Don't know who that is. That's okay. Or... I don't know. I'm trying to think. Or blah 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 blah. Like a fine artist. Uh, Polynor. Do you know who that is? Oh yeah. Polynor. Ghosted 1986. Whatever you said. 1996. 1996. These are two artists that are very well known on so- social media. David Cho, like completely different echelon, wildly known, um, social media known media artists. Okay. Okay. But these people, I don't know about David Cho, but these people would not be in a museum. Okay. Polynor is not in any contemporary, ICA contemporary art museum, probably. Yeah. I guarantee it. She's, like, very popular on Instagram. Viral imagery. Amazing fucking artist. But for some reason is alienated from and not a part of, like, the, like, Western, like, fine art canon. Okay. Okay. But then you look at so I was looking at the at the artist catalog for some random really high end gallery in Boston. Okay. Come on, you fuckhead. Literally No, don't say that. It's not better if you say it like that. (laughs) I can't just say that. No. All right, we'll cut that out. You can't tell people to do that while you're driving. Sorry about that. Or ever. Shout out to the people in the audience that didn't even know that we were driving until that moment. Yeah, I didn't, I've never thought about that being a thing. Did you see his outfit? Yeah, he looked like a juggalo. It, oh, you know, maybe. He had that juggalo drip. That's um, so funny. I was going to say <laughs> that he looked like E-Boy, but Monster Energy Drink Core, and then I realized that exists. <laughs> That's Juggalos. That's Juggalos. That's a Juggalo. <laughs> Sorry, I was homeschooled in 2005. <laughs> it's all good. I missed that. We, we, we're cool with that. Free Christmas tree. We love it's that. June. I'm having a good right. time driving down this road right now. There's a lot yeah, going on. That's all good. Sorry, go on. But Tell then we story. look at the catalog of this extremely fucking, like, you need a million dollars to walk into this place. All right. Right? <laughs> million dollars at the door. Just to fucking walk in. Suggested donation. Type place. Newberry Street type place. Yeah, yeah. And they're selling Keith Haring paintings. They're selling literal Picassos. You can go in there and buy, I don't know, a fucking Basquiat <laughs> type place. And then they also have some other living contemporary artists on their artist catalog. Okay. Interesting, right? Yeah. Like, what? who made the cut? Well, I guess that's the thing I'm talking about, is that you look at some of these artists that are selling in ridiculously high-end galleries for a shitload of money, you look them up on Instagram, and they have, like, a hundred followers. Yeah. And you're like, what? And, like, or you, like, see people. You go to the RISD Museum, for example, in Rhode Island, 
and walk around their galleries. Maybe they have a Warhol up. Maybe they have a traveling show. They have really nice stuff. They have really high-end, fine art, you know, Western canon. They got all of it. And they also have a huge part of their collection is uh, RISD alumni. That's badass. Good for them. Yeah. You look them up as well, and they don't have any any traction, social media wise, media wise, media appearance. Don't you think it's strange? There are two. There are like. There's many, 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 many millions of facets of the art world. Yeah. But there's also, there is, like, we, like, we, me and you could literally have a million fucking followers each. Yeah. And have tons of fucking people looking at our art every day. And have people in museums and extremely high-end galleries not give a fuck. It's kind of like how tons of podcasters and comedians that are really popular could not get on a movie to save their life. Yeah. Because I don't know why. Like, what is that? Like, there's this there's this whole universe of well-known, loved, and respected art and creators that are not at all associated with the... Uh, Establishments. You know, like, gilded... Um, like high end well, like institutions I think you have to think about okay so to narrow your question down a little bit I don't know exactly like, what I'm saying no it's okay I get what you mean The to talk about the Instagram or like social media but let's talk about Instagram right now when you think about Instagram followers or somebody that has like Polynor for example yeah who are the people that the, that follower account makes up because the majority of them are probably going to be the everyday person that is an art consumer. Like, somebody that's on Instagram looked at those comics and was like, wow, that's sick, and followed them because they thought it was nice. Like, not necessarily an artist, not necessarily an art world person, not necessarily even a collector, but they just enjoyed that content. Like, the average person, right? And that is, if you're thinking about, like, museum, institutional kind of model, that's the person who's going to buy a general admission ticket, but not the person who's going to buy the Picasso. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like... Maybe it's a question of the audience that you're marketing to. Like, Instagram and social media, I feel like, although it can be a tool for outreach people that are in the field, the majority of the people that are on there are, like, average people. Like, normal, don't, normal people. And it's like, I know that what I'm about to say isn't true. Okay. But I feel like it should be. Where, don't you think that the, the masses should be deciding what is culturally relevant? Yeah. Like, is, don't you think it's interesting that million? Like, think about like Fred on YouTube back in the day. Remember Fred? Yeah. Like that guy had millions of fucking people watching him. Like millions of little kids watching him. Like that guy was like Paw Patrol. Yeah. Like he was Jesus fucking Christ. on fire. You <laughs> Fred know what was I mean? The Paw Patrol of the past he fucking generation. was. He, the guy was a fucking like a media machine. Yeah. Of course, he had his like very famous downfall with TV where he ended up taking his his Fred thing movie? to real TV and made some movies and they were pretty sure commercial catastrophes. Anyway. But like, you know, someone like I just think it's interesting that there's so much media online that gets like billions more views with more people paying attention to it and caring about it, but is lowbrow in a sense not my opinion I'm just saying it seems yeah. like the world reflects back at it that it's lowbrow but the things that are in these like the highest echelons of intellectual value like these like spaces like the that are decided by like the collections and what is there and what is culturally relevant to our like museums and the world is decided by a tiny amount of people and they may even select things that are definitively uh, as determined by the amount of attention they get irrelevant well I think that's a symptom not necessarily of the art world but of marketing capitalism in general because if you think about that in terms of like for example even like what you just said about Fred wouldn't that logic follow through that those movies would have been awesome but maybe they didn't get marketed the right way maybe they weren't pitched to the right people I don't know why those specifically fell apart but or like thinking about selling any kind of product like a lip kit 
maybe you have like a really great product and a lot of people think that it's cool and like it but if you don't have the right backing or the institution to make them at the like to meet the demand to have the supply like there are certain things that you need i guess it really depends on what product you're talking about this isn't really a blanket generalization but for example when you're talking about those people that they're selling these pieces for this much money but they have like 30 followers on instagram what that indicates to me is that they have connections elsewhere with not necessarily the average person like they're making art for the client or they're marketing to the client directly for very, a very very unique audience which is the audience that okay. has money probably and that's cool you know like i don't know like if i could i don't know man like if i if there was like some tiny group of people that was paying attention to me that wanted me to do a very highly specific thing that i didn't even give a fuck about but i knew they would give me thousands and thousands of dollars if i did it yeah obviously i would do it yeah but that's probably not why those people make art the way they do i mean i don't believe that I think in the past there was a version of me that would talk down on people like that, but I don't believe in that anymore. I think... Dude, I if know. somebody told me that they would give me like $10,000 a month to wear clown makeup every single day for no reason, <laughs> I would. Oh my God. I literally would. Why, you should be one of those Why people, wouldn't you? You should sign up for like the NASCAR stickers you could put on your car for free advertising money. That would be, <laughs> See, that I might not actually do. Why? That sounds like a living hell. Why like, would I just drove that? around with like... Door, like I don't know, like... Like, like a Peapod monster energy sticker. Drink. Peapod? Well, no, if I could get... To, Peapod yeah. wouldn't be that bad. You know, actually, I take it back. If my car could be a NASCAR advertisement for just an absurd, obscene amount of random things, I probably would do that. You can. Anybody can sign up to do that. I'm pretty sure... I've seen Uber drivers in some cities with, like, an ad thing on top of their car where it's, like, displaying a random ad that, and they sell ad space to people while they Uber. That's interesting. Yeah. That's a smart business model. I think I've seen that too, actually. I never thought about it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know enough about what I'm talking about right now to actually make any kind of Me neither. points. Oh, I, <laughs> I absolutely don't. But this I would just, be a cool thing to interview somebody about who knows more than us. Overall, I just think it's interesting that there can be artists, that, and that there are artists that are internationally known and established have great working relationships with galleries across the fucking across the fucking world mm -hmm. or in in extremely important places you know where they're literally unknown yeah. as far as social media and shit goes but they have these excellent relationships you know, I don't want to even invoke the name of the odd nerdrum cult again because that was a fucking catastrophe no. dealing with those people. But they're a good example where odd nerdrum is doesn't have a fucking Instagram. Mm. Like he has pages that are ran by people in his network that are promoting things related to him. Yeah. But he personally does not have like a LinkedIn. Well, I feel like that's but true of like a lot him. of people that are at a certain level of success, though. Like, even if you think about, like, celebrity actors and stuff, a lot of them aren't running their own social media. Actors? Yeah. I oh, think the yeah. exception... It's interesting because I feel like this is a generational thing, too, though. Yeah. Because, like, fucking... I don't know, like, Cole Sprouse absolutely runs his own Instagram. Did yeah. you see the ass pic he posted, like, a couple weeks ago? I didn't see Cole Sprouse's ass pic. It was really funny. He posted a selfie in front of a mirror where his bare ass and, like, the back of his balls were showing in the photo. Love that. Yeah, like, you wouldn't Good see... Move. You know what did I mean? Did you say Cole or Dylan? Cole. Cole did that? Yes. Yeah. Nice. yeah. King, Shouts honestly. Out. I think he also edited his ass to be a little bigger, too. It was a, it was a good post. He some traction to his, his page. Ass. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, but I feel like for artists and musicians and actors that are appealing to, like, a Gen Z audience, it's almost critical to have, like, a Twitter and an Instagram. TikTok. Like, you need... That outreach is part of the business model versus, like, doing art management stuff for artists that are in, like, their 40s, 50s, and 60s. All of them have emails and websites. So, yeah, Gen X and Boomer famous people probably are not running their own social media. Yeah. And if they are... Like, have you ever seen Lana Del Rey's social media, for example? Um, I she, have. I haven't thought about it, though. She posts like a mom. Really? Yeah, like her, 
like, she, like, and I... How old is Lana? She's, like, probably 50. She's probably... Lana Del Rey? I bet, look it up. Are you she, fucking kidding me? She's either in her mid-40s or she's 50. No, she is not. She dude. is not in... She's in, like, her late 30s at the most. I bet she's, like, 44. 50 max 44 is my final final guess. Bro, Lana Del Rey is 37. Fuck. She was born in 1985. I was pretty close. That's Gen X, though. Pretty, you said she's 50. Well, I thought maybe she could be a 50-year-old woman. I don't think that's <laughs> that crazy. Ray? I've met 50-year-old... I've seen 50-year-old women that like, look like... I don't know, like that. I don't think that's that old. I was shocked because I was going to say that she was 29, and then I realized she's probably yeah, 29 when crazy. I fucking found out about her. Yeah. Like when fucking I was a Grimes child. is probably 29. 37 is still really young, though. But that's, like, I feel like on the other side of that, where she probably, like had dial-up internet when she was like 18 interesting maybe that's totally i don't know what the fuck i'm talking about i don't know what dial-up never internet. mind i'm gonna just shut the fuck up about whatever i'm talking about but i guess <laughs> <laughs> i have a few comments but right. it is a new thing the boomer generation of actors for example like morgan freeman tom cruise yeah. like baby boomer and beyond people are either completely offline or have people running their social media for them. Yeah. And there's also this new thing happening where they're also all starting hyper uh, produced, uh, over polished, uh, terrible podcasts. <laughs> uh, like, anyway. Like, but I guess what I think. Yeah, actually, I don't know what my point is. I don't know what I'm saying. I agree with you. But I think boomers are usually not on social media if they're famous or they have yeah. people running it. Gen X celebrities post like parents. Like it's not savvy social media, but they're still doing it. Yeah. Uh, like Britney Spears style. Millennial. Yeah, Britney Spears is a perfect example where she's there, she's doing it, she's going off, but the posts are weird. I love Britney. We love the posts, but they're they're weird posts. That's okay. Nothing yeah. wrong with that. And Millennial Core, it's there. We we pretty much know what that is. I feel like. Yeah. Where it's just the same. It's 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 normal social media use, but with dated memes. And like, like Facebook the comedy, leaning. Yeah, Facebook like the, Twitter leaning. Yeah, like the comedy is just a little bit like old. Yeah. But I, I have a thing. I have a thought about Gen Z celebrity social media use. Yeah. Where I think that it's giving a lot of those people a lot of credit to think that they are running their own social media. Because I think advertisers and marketing people are a lot fucking smarter than people give them credit for. Where there are probably ad agencies and, like, management companies that could run, like, a dead person social media as if it was really the person. I think that's true, but I you think know? with a lot of the platforms that we have, like, even if somebody's telling the person they have to post a certain amount of times a day, or it's, like, a manufactured post to look like whatever. Like, I, for example, I always use Doja Cat because I feel like... The like, inst the like Snapchat private story aesthetic that she has on her page is definitely like an on purpose thing at this point. Just because an average person, I feel like we get burned out doing that consistently for so long. Like you know, not what if I mean? you were getting paid a, a fucking bag. Well, that's what I'm that. saying. I'm oh, saying yeah. it's part of it's like a thing, but you can't have those posts without her filming them. Like she's part of it. She yeah. has to do it. She's like filming them in bed. Yeah, it's not like a photo, of, like a paparazzi picture with like a caption with a heart emoji that like Drew Barrymore posted you know what I mean maybe what we're getting at here is that being a professional artist that's dealing with like galleries and museums across the globe but you have like one follower on Twitter is well not Twitter I delete what I just said let me start again maybe being an art a professional artist with gallery relationships and you're selling art for obscene amounts of money and you don't have any social media activity at all is a completely different job versus if they were focusing on being essentially an agent, a market, an agent of sales, mm. a, like, like a, like a marketing henchman, yeah, an influencer, you know what I mean? Like that's what it means to have a huge social media following. 
because that is what the people are leveraging. It's the fact that like, hey, what's up? I have like 800,000 followers and an, an insane amount of engagement. Like give me a shitload of money and we'll sell men's soap together. And that's the thing that you have to think about too is when you're talking about those numbers, having, like there isn't really a parallel for the Instagram follower thing in terms of like marketing that's a little more behind the curtain. But to be somebody that is like, to have that many followers on a platform like that is showing that you have public appeal. So like the average person or the average consumer likes what you do or make. Which isn't really necessary if you're trying to sell only to celebrities or to like ultra famous. Like if you have a clientele that's like all lawyers in New York, who gives a fuck how many Instagram followers you have? They're not trying to promote to like random college kids. Yeah, like maybe the person with a thousand followers, maybe all 1,000 of them are extremely rich New York lawyers. Exactly. <laughs> like the random selection of like 500,000 people on TikTok or Instagram, the reason that's cool for people that are like teen, act teen movie actors or like pop stars or like micro celebrities or influencers is because that target demographic is the everyman that is going to be on Instagram. That isn't always valuable to everybody. Mm. It's also good for people that are at a smaller scale because it shows that this many people are invested in your work and what you do. Like if you're trying to sell a book or you're like trying to get a comic off the ground or you're trying to like if you have a project that's public facing, it's really valuable to have those numbers behind you. Like our podcast, for example. But if you're doing something that's a little bit more niche down, having the website and the email and being able to leverage specific connections and having a CV that's bulked up is probably more valuable. Could it have something to do with the price point of your, the product you're associated with where it's like if like I wonder if there's a way you could be successfully marketing yourself to a really high degree without really even having a social media following because you're selling extremely high end products versus yeah. if you were selling things that were a normal price like if you were selling an, like an energy drink. You know what I mean? That costs three dollars. Like it would be foolish to be trying to market that to a hyper specific, high net worth, small demographic. I'd be like, why would you be selling a tiny, cheap energy drink to like only a specific type? Like unless it's like gold dust, yeah. fucking water. So I don't know. Like so, like I wonder, like if you were selling something that was cheap that needed to be sold in mass in order to yield a profit, you would have to be marketing it to a, a fucking huge group of people versus something like fine art which is going to be sold maybe once or twice in your lifetime mm -hmm. uh for an insane amount of money yeah like well you also have to remember that some of these people like the people that are selling things to high-end galleries not every artist is full-time in the studio artist they might also be doing other stuff so if you think about it in that sense like if you're like a gallery coordinator or like you're a gallerist and you sell pieces to clients and you also make art and sell it through these places you might have connections through your business that bring you there but you might not have like a consistent studio practice where you're making like tiktoks and like time-lapse videos and you know you might not be in there every day you know what i mean so there's also that element that maybe they're just not in the same exact niche but if you think about it from the sense of like if you were a banker or if you were like i don't know somebody that was like in the finance sector or real estate or something like that you could have an instagram or a tiktok but you don't really need one you would be on linkedin you know or maybe you would be doing everything over email depending on i don't know i don't fucking know how that works but i think a common misconception that i'm realizing that i've had through, through this conversation is that instagram is the platform or tiktok is the platform that like quote unquote everybody's on but something that you have to remember when thinking about marketing and outreach is that it's really easy to think that the demographics that you're in are quote unquote everybody and just because i'm on there every day and everybody i know is on there every day doesn't mean that everybody everybody's on there every day also it's interesting to consider the net worth of specific demographics because if you're like tiktok famous for example that's probably like if you have a million followers on tiktok it's probably not a million 50 year olds like, yeah. or of like 1 million people like that are 30 to 40 years old. I think there's something, yeah, that's true. I think there's something to be said about the fact that if you look at your analytics on anything, no matter what project you're doing, it's always like 18 to 25 or 25 to 35 year olds from random area. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like me and you on this podcast, at least, 
do not have anybody that's like that's and that's older than 50 or 60 and we don't have anybody any like young young teenagers we don't have any really young people or any really older people i don't think i would have listened to this podcast when i was 13 yeah, absolutely not. We would not be that interesting. <laughs> I would have. I was watching Fred, probably. Maybe if we were more outrageous and like. Thirteen-year-old me would have been so insulted to hear that just now. Oh, that, that you would be listening. Yeah. Yeah, Fred was more like a kids' YouTube I was thing. Like nine years. Like old. he would have like dominated kids' YouTube if it existed at the time. Anyway. Be... Oh, I'm gonna get my um. Here's wait. Don't say that. Um, finishing thought. Okay. <laughs> Here's an interesting thing. To consider the net worth of specific age demographics that you are interacting with, or that you are have a following for, let's say you like. Okay, Fred was iconic to really, really young millennial age people right now, right? Well, like yeah. the millennial millennial age people, people in their mid twenties, were young teens when he was popular. Is that? Is that like an accurate so. guess or whatever? Yeah. Could he have a future career as a nostalgia icon? No. Well, Macaulay Culkin's like a pretty iconic dude, the Home Alone kid. Yeah, but Fred and is I feel cringe. like that couldn't have happened when he. W Fred is cringe, but I'm saying I don't. Would whatever. you watch a Fred movie right now for nostalgia? Dude, if Fred just came out of nowhere as like an, a normal adult man. That was like, hey, I do this thing now. I'd probably be like, fuck yeah, bro. I'm honestly really happy for you, and I'm gonna maybe be excited about this. I mean, it was yeah, something but would you, that I cared would you about. go to the movie? Fucking baby, I don't know if it was You'd like a it was like a five dollar Tuesday movie, na movie night yeah, see, at like no. a Patriot Cinemas. Yeah, well, that fuck? doesn't exist anymore. Aww. Rip. Um. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. I'm completely talking out of my ass, and have no clue what I'm talking about. Usually. Who would be? I'm if just there saying, was like a movie, a comedy movie, like directed by Adam Sandler that featured Jenna Marbles, maybe I go see that. Dude, yeah, that would be really good. <laughs> that does sound really good. But let's say this, ready? What if you were an act, a personality, an artist, a whatever? Yeah. And for some reason or another, your following was younger people. That might mean that means that you kind of, in a sense, have a low net worth audience. Because kids typically, young people and kids typically don't have a lot of money. Yeah. And, but if you are able, if you don't just, if those, that audience grows up, you probably aren't going to just start marketing to the new young people. Like you're probably going, your audience is probably going to grow with you in a lot of instances. Interesting. Like, I feel like that's why a lot of people started to hate like pop punk bands that young people liked and then those young people got older it's like in a lot of cases they didn't grow with their audience they just tried to market to the new generation of young people and it was awkward it was cringy yeah. and it was creepy and it just was like maybe you should have just matured with the initial demographic of people which is why bands were... like these are two very different examples but like the Jonas Brothers or My Chemical Romance have staying power with their demographic that is a perfect example of what I'm talking about yeah. where they grew with their audience yeah you know what I mean MCR and Jonas Brothers that is perfect yes I was listening to or Jonas the Brothers Sprouse the Sprouse Twins yeah are a good example too well actually they don't really apply they don't really fit to what I'm talking about but they're not cringe I fucking love Cole Sprouse yeah Cole but Cole Sprouse doesn't yeah. do anything anymore does he Dylan, I think he has like a normal guy life now. I don't know if he does like big like I film projects. I think he just does like photography and huh. whatever. Anyway, um, well, first they've su successfully marketed as he's still a teen, teen dude. <laughs> he's like thirty years old. Isn't that fucking nuts? Yeah. I think he's like twenty nine. It's really weird. I tried to eat a glazed donut. Uh, today for the first time in a long ass time like a, like maybe like a month or so I haven't eaten a glazed donut you didn't love it? it was gross man it was disgusting I don't like glazed donuts that made me feel like shit I yeah. ate half of it and I was like that was fucking terrible they're a winter treat yeah wow you can't eat a hot glazed donut you can eat a fresh crispy cream glazed donut that's like still warm Dunkin Donuts. That's good ass shit. Never. They come out of the oven disgusting at Dunkin Donuts. <laughs>
Did you know that there's like a donut distribution, like food thing, where they're created like daily and then delivered at like 3 a.m. all over the state? That's crazy. That Isn't makes that sense like, though. Can you imagine being the donut guy? I was at work the other day and it was like 9 in the morning on a fucking Monday. And um, me and my coworkers were like, it was before our morning meeting and we were talking about Dunkin' Donuts because we all got dunks. And one of my coworkers was trying to like get everybody jazzed up on their dunks order. I was like, what do you what do you get from dunks? It was really good this morning, right? Like we're manifesting a really good week. Like what did you have? And we were like, I got like a sausage egg and cheese and a burnt English muffin. And I got like, a cardboard that, sandwich. Yeah, he was a, like, that sounds so coffee. good. And I was like, I got a like maple bacon, sweet pepper bacon Who bullshit. Who the fuck are you talking about? One of my coworkers. Oh. He was trying to get us like excited and everyone was like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like bro, it's fucking nine AM. <laughs> No, he like, had I'm gonna up. die, stop. It was really funny, it was cute. Because he was completely sincere, too. It wasn't yeah. just like, you know. <laughs> Damn. Uh, so, do you think, maybe we should pause this recording, move on to the next thing we're doing now that we're not doing that interview? How long is this recording? 31 minutes. Just about. I'm gonna go get my wallet, and we can record on the way to Boston if you want. Yeah, I'm down. Okay, cool. Yeah, back. So they're tightrope walkers, or are they slackline partakers? Isn't that the same? It's tightroping and slack line. I don't really know. We're what on Sturrow Drive in traffic right now. Yeah, it's like a few. The good old days. It's a few hours past the last recording we had about Fred from YouTube. <laughs> Look at that type of jumping jack that person's doing. It's a side to side. Jumping it's jack. like a jumping jack, but no legs. It looks like a sim dancing. <laughs> I mean, they they do. I, I meant their motion does. Look at all of these people exercising on the Esplanade. Yeah. It's probably a cool thing to do if you live in one of these uh, billion zillion dollar brownstones. Well, it seems like... It seems nice and it looks very normal to see people doing that. But if you really think about the like actual logic of waking up, putting on leggings in a sports bra, grabbing a water and like a smoothie, walking to a public space and then just doing jumping jacks. I could never. That actually does sound really horrible. It's that's fucked. Good but for if, you guys. But it if looks you look like you're having fun, but But if you look the part, like okay, if I yeah. went in public and I was wearing jeans and a t-shirt and jeans and started doing jumping jacks, someone would be it would look disturbing. Like, yeah. it would be like, what is this person doing? Because of the This jeans. is kind of creepy. But if I was wearing the neon, like, cyclist-type clothing, yeah. where they're... You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like running in, like, a hoodie yeah, and, and, like, cargo shorts versus <laughs> running wearing, like, athletic athleisure shit. I feel like it's the pants more than anything. I think more, like... Criminals, like bank robbers, cat burglars, people like that. Yeah. I think those people should all wear athleisure. Yeah, they'd be able to get away with it, I think. Yeah, because like, you know, like a striped white shirt and like a, a cat woman eye nose mask. Like how It's, it's how very conspicuous. Dress. How burglars dress. Yeah, exactly. With the beret. And like a and like a sack that they put all of their the, the jewels in. Are you talking about a mime? No. They don't wear berets. Cat burglars. They no. wear like a like a Zorro eye thing, like a eye band. Yeah. Striped shirt. And a beret. White face paint. I think. <laughs> no, I think you're confusing a couple Mimes of cartoon ripped images. Off. Cat burglars. What the fuck am I talking about? <laughs> We've been sitting on this uh, in insane traffic. Insane traffic? Are you serious? Of Kenmore no, Square. No, we've been exit. on Storrow Drive for like eight minutes. This is not insane, Boston traffic. This is right now. L.A. style gridlock. You're ridiculous. It's six twenty on a weekday in Boston. It's terrible. Yeah. It's terrible, man. My weekend ends tomorrow. I go back to work tomorrow. <sighs> I like my job though, so it's actually not that sad. Have you ever, I've had jobs before where the night before I had to go back to work, I literally wanted to kill myself. Like I would just lay on my couch in my room and just be tired but not sleeping and just stare at the ceiling and think about how I wanted to die. But that's not the job I have now. I really like my job. 
Yeah, tennis. you were in the Trader Joe's cult. Trader Joe's, I liked. It wasn't that bad, but it wasn't great. It's not because it was a bad job, really, or because I didn't like my coworkers or anything. It was because I was on one career path for a really long time, was working really hard on it, and then COVID happened and fucked my life, and then I worked at a grocery store. And it was really overwhelming and stressful, and a bunch of the other people that I worked with were also in the arts, and all of us thought that we were just never going to work in the arts again. And then six months went by, and we all got different jobs. Wow. Yeah, I'm glad you loved that story. That was great. <laughs> it was really exciting. Thanks. No, it's not a bad story. Thanks. It's just like a dismal one. Yeah. It was just bleak. Because it wasn't even a fun Trader Joe's either. It was the Winter Hill Trader Joe's. What do you mean? Like, it's just in the middle of a... Like, Winter Hill sucks. What the fuck? And it's right in the middle of a fucking mall. Like, a really high-end, bougie mall. You know, you know the armory is that what it's called? Um. Or the fucking, the wor- the assemb- assembly? assembly assembly assembly. Yeah. yeah, it was at the assembly mall. I like that place. That's the biggest Trader Joe's in like the state, I think. It's just so. Ugh. You. Ugh. Like every time I'd be there, I, I just was in a parking lot. You know what I did one time assembly when I was is there? Kind of a bummer. This I was, like the Trader Joe's. This though. was pre-vaccine. I was skating around in that parking lot one night. Uh, waiting for you to get out of work because oh. I was picking you up for some reason and I went into this area where it was like a bunch of tents and parking barriers or whatever like jersey barriers and I was skating and like messing around and I was like what is this place what's all this stuff doing here oh yeah and then I just looked at a sign and it said like outdoor COVID-19 drive through testing site yeah and I was like ah oh! and then I like left <laughs> because I was You're like no thought that I would like get miasmatically contaminated. <laughs> oh, look at that. There's a window Miasma. with a cat, a cat bench in it. I thought there was a cat, yeah. but there's not a cat. Huh. Fuck, man. I would literally cut off one of my fingers to have an apartment right now. You would cut off one of your own fingers to have an expensive ass lease that you can't afford in a place that was filled with rats and and everywhere smelled like pasta. Yeah. I don't think that's a good trade. Like, literally, like, <laughs> removing well, I was thinking, a digit. <laughs> I was thinking in this scenario that the person would give me the apartment. Like, it would be free? Yeah. All right, now we're talking. Absolutely. Now that could be a good deal. But like, free like housing Indiana for life? Plate that says Boston Red Sox. It's weird. <sighs> God. Boss Sox. Dude, Tops. you ever just wish that you could just Grand Theft Auto, like, drive on, like, the grass and in the breakdown lane and just go around cars? Are we still going to the library? Yeah, that's the home? location in which what that was requested. Oh, it's If we were going home, we would be on Route 3 by now. Well, I we were only, I didn't know if we had a ton of traffic to get through, or if it's only 10 minutes away, then we're fine. But if we have a long way to go, then we're fucked. Yeah. But we don't, so it's okay. Hmm. Da, 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 da. This area looks dystopian. Yeah. With with respect and love. <laughs> I am Seems tired. to be a full-blown camp beneath the bridge. Hmm. Oh, man. This is a horrible episode. Should we stop recording? Maybe. <laughs> You're just like, yeah, it is actually. <laughs> Shut it off. <laughs> no. It's a good one. It's a good one. Turn it off. Really? For we'll, real? We'll finish later. Should I even include this? Should I just cut this whole thing? No, this is good. This is a little segment. <laughs> Why do you think... Oh, hey, want to know something weird? Yeah. Remember the episode where we got smoothies from that place? And we were, like, in the store recording and ordering our smoothies and waiting. And I don't know if you remember this, but Bob Marley was playing Mm -hmm. over the speaker. Yeah. I was reviewing our catalog of episodes on YouTube. Don't look at those much. 
but that whole episode got blocked in all countries. Because Bob Marley was Because there? of the Bob Marley song playing in the background for like like 10 seconds. That sucks. Yeah, I, I it up. had me, it gave me the option to try to cut it out. So I like tried to and I couldn't really use like the YouTube manual edit thing. And it was taking so long to load that I just was like forgot about it and then like closed my laptop. And I don't know if it ever like fully buffered and, and went and saved. I don't think that's like a critical episode in our catalog so it's probably fine, but that's annoying. I'm also pretty sure uh, nobody really listens to this podcast on YouTube. Yeah. I make it available just because, you know, I don't, you know, it's that's good, it's cool to have it on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, also, it doesn't seem to include the ads on YouTube. Interesting. I think it might be an ad-free experience on YouTube. That's kind of nice. That might not be true, though. Maybe we're doing a service to our YouTube Red listeners. Yeah, shout out to YouTube people. Man, I'm fucking burnt out as fuck. I'm so tired. Me too. We did a lot today. And I'm really glad that... <sighs> as hard as it was to record yesterday's episode, I'm really glad that we powered through it and finished it. Yeah. And even if today's episode that we're making isn't, like, as exciting as interviewing a new person would have been, I'm glad that we got to do that. Do we want to talk about all the stuff that we did today? Yeah. We haven't given an update. Oh, yeah, we uh, drove around. Oh. We did a lot of shit. We yeah. went to the Harvard Art Museum for, like, an hour I love the half. Harvard Art Museum. Yeah, it was really nice. It was cool. Um, we went, went around there for a bit. Um, I did a sketch of this painting that I really like, the Demoiselle. Um, I forget who made it. Wait, I wrote down. Hold on. Yeah, it's in this little room on the third floor where, or second floor where it's like, uh, it's really interesting because it's just one room that's all mythologized biblical scenes in like a pre-Raphaelite style. Not all. The, De the Blessed Demoiselle by Dante Gabriel Rossetti is a p commissioned painting that was an illustration of a poem by the same guy that some one of his peers commissioned him to paint. Um, and the poem he originally wrote when he was 19, but he was continuously revising it for his entire life until he died. And it, the poem itself is etched into the frame of this painting. Did you write down the poem? I didn't write down the whole thing, but I wrote it at the beginning. Man, how different was life back then that like, can you imagine, like there's a lot of poems that I wrote when I was 19 that I uploaded directly to Tumblr <laughs> that I would rather like like die than to read again or to see again and I can't imagine reworking the same piece of writing for my entire life. Yeah, me neither. Like just a single poem, reworking a poem over and over again. Yeah. That's fucking nuts, I think. You know what's something I have done that's kind of similar to that? Is I was thinking about songwriting recently and about how I've written probably like fucking like forty songs at this point that have like are all identically structured yeah. compositionally and I was kind of like man like I'm an idiot I'm not even creative I'm just writing the same song over and over again oh. but then I kind of realized something that I think there's a part of me that's yearning to write this perfect ideal of a song in my mind yeah. that resembles this these songs that I keep writing but I think those songs are just failed attempts at me trying to write this idealized song in my brain. What do you think the idealized song? I don't know. Interesting. I don't know, but I, I kind of wonder if there's some unconscious thing happening where I keep reusing these things because I want them, like I want, like there's some mark that I am not yet hitting. I personally, um, I think that's really cool and I think that you should keep striving to it. But I also don't think that your songs all sound the same. I think that your songs are really good and that there's a lot of range. Thanks. Appreciate it. Yeah. I... Um, yeah. Well, I didn't finish our recap of the day, by the way. Oh, okay. Well, dude... Unless you have more to say. All right. Well, this isn't the Theo's Monologue podcast. Um, I have to chime in and talk as You can talk. As well. We need to back and forth. Don't forget Go on theme. segues. Okay, do you have more to your segue? Different bits and stuff. That makes it more interesting. If I just sit and listen... I agree. I'm just then saying. I'll, then, 
you know. Before we go on to a new bit, I want to just finish. Don't right think now. that I'm just. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm so glad you clarified because I thought you were just some goon. Some goon? <laughs> you think I'm a goon now? Yeah. Anyway, uh, but well, yeah, now, Harvard so Art Harvard. Museum, good times. Yeah, so we went there, and then we um, left the Harvard Art Museum because we ran out of parking, and we went to our car, we went to Star Market, and then we ate lunch, and we had a little picnic at the um, fucking... Mount Auburn Cemetery. Mount Auburn Cemetery, yeah. And that was really, really fun, and we ate mangoes and strawberries and blueberries, and... Um, the mangoes were gross. Tuna sandwich. They weren't gross, you just ate part of the core, which they shouldn't have put in our fruit cup, but still, the real, the real mango part was good. I too. didn't like it. You liked the regular mango. I didn't like the core. You're not supposed to eat the core, you eat the mango meat. But the, that's the thing, though, is that it was in the fruit cup, so I thought that I was supposed to eat it. Which is understandable. Because it was in the cup. It's understandable, but you ate the regular part, the cart part that was the darker yellow, and you liked it. You said so. And we ate an avocado. Yeah, an avocado, and we had some tuna sandwiches. Tuna. Tuna salad. Um, so we did that. Too much tuna. It was decent. It was a good amount of tuna. Um, and then we went to the tower, which I had never been to Mount Auburn Cemetery until you brought me there in 2020, and because of COVID, the tower was locked, and it's been locked for years, as far as I knew. Locked for years. Locked for years. Um, and then we went up it today for the first time, and it was really, really cool. And we were really high up, and we could see everything. It was beautiful. And then when we were there, we were talking about um, all the different places in Boston that we could go and how pretty it was. And we were like, damn, dude, what if we go to the BPL? I bet they're still open. So we drive all the way to the area where the BPL is, and then we didn't go to the BPL um, for kind of no particular reason. We got kind of hungry. It was hard to park. So we went to the Common. I think we accidentally wound up at the Common. We, we went to the McDonald's, the Boston Common, and then we um, went to a bench, and we sat on the bench, and we ate our McDonald's, and we people watched and talked. And this lady came up to us, who was a retired biologist, retired biology professor, I think she said. And um, she was talking to us about squirrels and dogs and cats. And then she just went on like a monologue for a while that was really interesting, and then she left. And she didn't let us speak, but it was kind of nice. Yeah, I tried to ask her if she lives in the area, and she just continued. She, it was like I, I didn't even speak. I don't think she heard you. I think she didn't hear me. She was just in a in a daze. She told this story about um, she was talking about animals and empathy and like their understanding and like the scope of emotion that animals have. She was talking about when she was a little girl and she was like ten. Her mom told her not to touch the cat when he was in the litter box because he would be offended. She also said, she didn't say it like that though. When she first said it, she said, my mother told me not to touch Daffy in the pan. And I had to work out what she meant, which took me a few minutes. And oh. then, yeah. I had completely tuned out for this whole discussion and was just like, I can't listen anymore. You missed a really good, a really good monologue. I was like, I can't listen to this anymore. I'm done. And she I was spaced out. You missed, you have to listen for the, the, for the gems when you're talking <laughs> to strangers in public. And um, she was talking, she was like, my mother told me I couldn't, bother Taffy and Daffy in the pan because I would offend him and I was stunned I was like how could I offend a cat you can't offend a cat cats can't experience offense that implies so much about cats to say that he would be offended so me and my brother decided to conduct an experiment because I'm a retired biologist of course so this was early in my career ha 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 but we pointed at him and we laughed at him and we said ha ha Daffy Daffy's in the pan and that cat slunk away and I know that cat was offended if anything if ever a creature on this earth has been offended that creature was offended. And don't forget, dog spelled backwards is God. And I was like, wow. And she was like, yeah, have a great day. And I was like, you have a great day too. God damn it. That just made me tired again. You I'm just kidding. don't I'm just understand how lovely it was. I have to tell you something. What do you have to tell me? When we were driving down Surrow Drive and we were getting off the exit of Kenmore to go towards the BPL, yeah. I had already subconsciously decided that I didn't want to go to BPL and that we were going to park near the common and go to McDonald's. Uh, I kind of figured, because I wasn't even paying attention. I don't know why I wasn't paying attention, and then but we just suddenly didn't go to the BPL. We drove by, it went, BPL, and you just kept driving, and I was like, haha. And then we were right in front of McDonald's, and you were like, wait, are we going to McDonald's? I don't want McDonald's. And then I was like, where else are we going to eat? Everywhere is way too expensive in this area. What are we going to do? Go to Tasty Burger? I don't like Tasty Burger. Shake Shack. I like Shake Shack, but I don't know if there is one right there, actually. They're nice, but it's just like, is it nice enough to pay, like, $22 for a low-quality thing? I'd rather buy a low-quality thing that's cheap. It's not that expensive <laughs> to go to Shake Shack. If I'm going to eat shit food, I don't want to pay a lot. Fair. 
I don't want to eat expensive not, shit. I mean, that makes sense fiscally, but Shake Shack is not that expensive. It's like twelve dollars to get a mushroom burger. Yeah, yeah, it's probably it's probably not that much. I did spend about probably $8 being overzealous with all my so. frugality. Well, it's okay. I love that about you. Uh, uh, I spent like six dollars. You yeah, you know what's funny? The coupon was for the thing I was getting. But I had picked it without selecting the coupon, and it was going to charge me the whole thing. And then I was like, what the fuck? That's why you got to check the daily deals. God. You think I'm not frugal? Yo, you know what would be crazy? What? If we topped off this day, finale of the day, Yeah. went bowling. I thought you were frugal. You wanna go fucking bowling all of a sudden? No, actually, maybe I don't. That, that would be really fun, though. Would it? Do you? Should we? Should we go bowling? I don't know. Let's let's put a pin in that one. Let's table that one. Until we get to the South Shore. Until we're near a bowling alley. Where the fuck are we gonna find a bowling alley? <laughs> fucking in every single fucking town. What? Ever. You would really think that that would be like an antiquated business model by now. Bowling alley. Bowling is a timeless American past time. Is it American? I don't know. I don't think it is. What is it, fucking French? <laughs> Why are you saying that? It's fucking out of the question. Bowling doesn't Was seem it French. French? It doesn't sound like a French sport. I mean, it seems like it has a lot in common with, like... Like, um, isn't there another one that's, like, really similar to that? Uh... I was gonna say cricket, but I don't think that's true. Cricket is... L- yeah, what the hell is one. cricket? Isn't cricket like kind of like a fusion of like baseball and like rugby? Yeah. Is that fucking totally stupid? I don't know. What about um? You're thinking about crochet? Not cro- croquet. 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 I think I am. Croquet. So it could be English. Is cr- croquet? Croquet is like a 1930s transatlantic activity. Yeah. I don't know shit about shit. Yeah. Anyway, um. So it was a pretty good day in Boston today. We didn't do anything that we planned, but... Oh, also, I worked a bunch in the morning, so I was really happy to do fun stuff. But you brushed your teeth first. I did. And that's what counts. Yeah. I brushed my teeth first, and I woke up in time to have a calming morning before I started working. And then I got all my work done super fast because of that, because I was prepared. Good job, Theo. Thank you. That's a big deal. That is a big deal. I talked to the podcast about that yesterday while you were pumping gas. Yeah. They don't know it was yesterday, but... Uh, yeah. 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 Uh, I'm so tired. Hey, okay, I need to pitch something to you. What do you need to pitch to me? And I would need your help with it if I decided to do it. Okay. I feel like this would be simultaneously two things. I'm embarrassed to even talk about it on the podcast, but I'll let in the podcast listeners be my confidant and my idea. Because I feel like this would be a really great way to promote my art to get word out there and to afford myself uh, undeserved, possibly, credibility. Okay. Here's what I want to do. I'm going to produce and create a mini documentary about myself that I am not in at all. What? No B-roll of me, just like pictures, pictures of my art, and interviews with people who know me where they are asked questions like what do you, what type of art does Brian make like a uh, Banksy not like not not make it look as though my, I have some type of secret identity that would be so but funny because your ma- art name is just your legal name right but <laughs> but make it so I'm interviewing people who know me and have like a title card where it says like Jim Smith, art collector. And then Jim is like, oh, you know, Brian like makes this like really, and then like film some fucking interview with that person. And then go, yo, thank you so much for doing this. I know this was weird because I was standing behind the camera and you were talking to me as if I wasn't there. But thank you for doing this interview about me. This feels really narcissistic and weird, but thanks. It would be better if I did it. See, that's where you would come in (laughs) is that I, and I would want it to be the type of interview where it's like the interviewer, not that I wouldn't want you to be in it, but I, 
it would it would be edited in such a way that the interviewer is not a part of the segment. Yeah, they just ask it and they edit it out. Phantom host type situation. Yeah. And and I feel like if I did that and I interviewed like three to five people, had like that David Attenborough British art documentary type of narration, like a biographic narration, where it's like a slideshow of pictures. Maybe I'll make the pictures black and white to make it feel more timeless, <laughs> and then have paintings in it, and then it's like and Brian like blah 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 what you know blah 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 blah, and then it cuts to an interview with someone and then they're like you know it was such a crazy time you know what i'm saying yeah like basically rip off the exact format of every youtube every documentary that's free on youtube take the format completely take the aesthetic tone of it take all of that rip all of it off and 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 curate the footage that i've taken of people that know me and fit it into that style i think that would work really well upload it to youtube Brian Huntress, Behind the Art, in parentheses and all caps, documentary. I will help you do that if you make one for me too. Yeah, why not? But I think that that's what needs to happen because, like, I think as an artist, if I can make promotional material about myself that the viewer doesn't really know or it isn't immediately obvious that it's just something I made to promote myself... Like, I'm talking self-promotion in disguise. Self-promotion wearing fake glasses and a mustache. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know what we could do, too, is we could try out... So we could revisit our previous idea where we wanted to make a documentary about the Letter Project. We actually talked about this on the podcast, but you might not realize when that was uploaded because it was used as a filler episode where we didn't have an episode one week. Oh, really? Where I used an old recording where we talked about the documentary that we did not complete. I didn't even know you did that. It's it's an older episode where it's... What? I found footage from that, though. I still have the footage from that as well. I did not uh, d- uh, dispose of it. Oh, maybe it was on your computer. Was it the time that I was using your computer for um, FX stuff? Were you going through my files? No, I was saving images and putting them in spreadsheets. So maybe I just found it in your downloads or something. I'm just kidding. I didn't really care. I saw the thumbnail and I was like, oh. Hey, you're drawing. Yeah. I didn't notice. I've been drawing for like five minutes. <sighs> but yeah, I just think that that would be a really interesting thing. I would do all the legwork to set it up, obviously. And, uh, you know, procure the equipment and process the, the footage and whatnot. Yeah. But I just think that that would be like fucking dope. Like yeah. that would be so... Like... It would be just clean as shit. And it, it's one of those ideas where you tell it to people and they're like, that's kind of stupid. Like, that's a little weird. Like, you shouldn't... Like, that's like making your own Wikipedia page. But once you actually do it, the same people who would say, that's kind of weird and dumb, would be like, fuck, man, that was sick. I yeah. should have done that. Yeah, I think that's true. Um, but yeah, so don't... Don't tell anyone, podcast, <laughs> podcast listeners. I'm only sharing this with you because you guys are a hyper niche audience that probably knows everything about me and Theo, but you are not at all the main. You are a small portion of the audience, and that's why we love you. Of the main audience? Yeah, like being the world. Yeah. That I'm insane. Life. Um, do you know that we've talked about this before? What? Not this specific idea, but making a documentary about ourselves. I don't know. We talked about this, like, I know we, ago. I feel like we've had this idea before in different forms. Not this specific. Gotcha. But I, I just really think that for, I think for my, I think what I, from my perspective, I think the only way that it would look good. The only way that it would be like fucking nice is if we, you know the phrase hide, hiding the hand? Yeah. Right? Like for for other, for if you don't know, the idea in a painting of completely disguising brush strokes so that you can't see the maker's marks, you yeah. know? And if we could make something documenting our artistic vision and what we do and these things we make but 
you hide the hand in your media so that it doesn't look like you just slapped it together to promote yourself. Yeah, I like that. Hmm. Interesting. Do you feel car sick right now? I actually don't, but you were just drawing and I feel like a lot of, I've heard a lot of people say that, that when they look at laptops or watch movies in cars or read books in cars, right. they get car sick. I felt fine until I stopped drawing and looked up and now I feel like I'm gonna fucking vomit. Oh shit. Oh my god. Are you no, really I'm good. I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust in a second. I just, you're totally right. I was focusing on, so I'm doing a pen and ink, like little cross hatching thing right now, and I think I was really hyper focused on that. Oh. And then I just looked up and we were in motion, and my brain was like, what the fuck? Ooh, <laughs> yeah. It's alright. I'll be fine. Um, it's already going away. I think the water is on the floor in front of you. You can have some, but if you could grab me that so I could that take a sip of water, it'd be awesome. <laughs> okay. I just was gonna ask you for it anyway but then i felt bad asking you for it because i figured it sounded um, like oh wait not... i have it it's on my side i hate you i was wrong <laughs> i hate I you i was mistaken do you want some no okay sorry i thought you were gonna be like you can have some water it might make you feel better and then you're like can you give me the <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> i was going to ask before that yeah whatever all right look at here's my little leaf uh i love it but i can't really see it very well you already saw it okay you got it right yeah, because it blew out of your hand, and then it landed in a patch of grass that was fenced in by little landscapers' ropes. And you were like, I lost my leaf, I can't get it, because it's in the restricted area. Yeah, I couldn't go in there. And I was like, Theo, grass. the rules aren't real. And then I climbed into the restricted area and retrieved the leaf. <laughs> That's why we're homies. Yeah. <laughs> We have instances like that occur like every time we hang out. That's something that people definitely wouldn't know about you from your like persona. Really? Is that you just will not break little rules <laughs> like that. I don't like to break little like, rules. Like you just get very afraid of like, no, no, it says do not enter. We can't go in that way. That's the exit. Yeah. <laughs> I just, it's not that I'm scared, it's that there's an established order of things, and if there's no need to violate it, why get everyone's feathers in a twist? <laughs> I like that, I like that, uh, that mashing of idiom. What do you mean? Feathers in a twist? Yeah, that was a good... Well, if you twisted you just, up a you duck, you probably it. wouldn't like it. I don't think any duck would like being twisted up. Yeah. That sounds like duck death. Exactly. Um, Meanwhile, you, on the other hand, if we're blowing up the same idiom or just like out there kicking ducks like I, we were, I am not even twisting them I'm kicking them in, the, we were driving, in their necks we were driving earlier it was when we turned the recording off oh it was my like, god I forgot about that it we turned the recording flex. off because it started getting I don't even know what you're referring to I was going to generally say that you were just screaming fuck every couple minutes and then giggling after I was like being aggressive. Driving, slamming on the horn when nothing was happening. We were going through an intersection, you had a green light, and there was nobody in the road, and you were just banging on the horn. People want to be in car accidents in downtown Boston. Like, it's like people <laughs> want to drive in front of you and cut you off or, like, violate your personal bubble and fuck up your life. <laughs> and then while... So my windows rolled down, and then some guy from, like, a few lanes over at a red light while I was at the red light yelled out so i have a bumper sticker oh yeah of a college on my back window and the guy was like hey did you go to like umass this uh, at me and before i even realized what he said i was just like fuck you and <laughs> drove away and then i realized that he had asked me about the college sticker on my car it was a weird question and you had a weird answer but he was like a guy yelling at me from his car from two lanes Bro, over if a random I was dude like, what if a random dude in boston in downtown boston starts yelling at you while you're in a red at a red light in a parked car you do not escalate the situation he was in a car too i agree with that <laughs> if it was a aggressive pedestrian then i would just roll my window up and lock my door but he was also in a car he could have gotten out then my my uh, previous answer, I would roll the window up, lock the doors, drive away if possible. One time when I was a really little kid, my dad was probably like 27 when this happened, but um, I was probably like five, and 
<laughs> it was like nighttime and he called my mom like on the verge of tears he was like wicked upset and he's like i just punched someone in the face <laughs> she was like what because <laughs> if you I, nobody who's listening to this has probably ever met my dad but he's very like non-confrontational he's just a really laid-back guy he's a laid-back like, guy he's he doesn't, a chill guy yeah he like doesn't talk very much not loud he's been described as shy in the past huh. <laughs> like he's not he's not the kind of guy who punches someone in the face <laughs> and he was in the car and he was he was under 30 at this point like he was pretty young he was driving home from work and he's at a red light and there was this guy that was just like asking for money and he was like walking up and down the road and um my dad rolled his window up but his car at the time like this passenger side door was fucked up and the lock didn't work so he locked his doors but his passenger door didn't lock and the guy just opens the door and gets in the passenger seat and my dad was like get out of the car and he was like no but like wasn't being aggressive he just sat there and my dad panics punches the guy he falls over out of the car my dad drives away and then calls my mom almost crying <laughs> it's like this just happened to me that's insane dude. i don't know if he's okay <laughs> you know i kind of did something like that one time when i was 16 and i was with two of my friends at the time and we were all like like dangerously drunk yeah because that's the type of teenager i was nice and I was waiting at a 7-Eleven for my dad to pick me up. <laughs> and he and he wasn't there yet, but a car had shown up, parked in front of us. And for some reason, I thought that it was my dad's car. So I got in the passenger seat and my two friends got in the back. And it was literally just a fucking random guy <laughs> in the driver's seat. Oh my God. And he was like yelling for us to get out. And it was fucking insane you were just the aggressor <laughs> i thought it was my dad's car like i just was like oh, oh there's the God. ride guys get in <laughs> so i had also caused two other people who had no idea like what my dad even looked like that dude probably also thought you get guys in. were gonna like jump him or something. who knows what that guy thought but yeah we just like, Can you imagine in. if you were sitting in your car and three drunk teenagers just <laughs> got in i was <laughs> like my friends are so mad at me too because the guy was like freaking out. I was like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> Good job. The funniest part was the guy did not even remotely have the same type of car as my dad. <laughs> you were just it was just a it was wrong. a black sedan. I would have been mad at you too. And it was just not even close to the correct car. I don't know why I thought that. A black sedan. Did your dad drive? Get, like get a, a white van. <laughs> Oh my god. At the time, yeah, you had a white van. Classic. I, yeah. It's classic a, Brian. Classic me at the time. <laughs> Are my lights on? Imagine if you just did that now. If I did that type of thing now, if you did that I'd to be me, very unhappy. If we were out life. somewhere and you're like, that's my mom, let's get in that car, and it was the wrong car, I would flip out on you. I would be so mad. I would, I would, I would understand. <laughs> I'd be like, dude, I'm sorry. Oh my god. That'd be so awkward. <laughs> Just for context, if there's any new listeners, I don't drink ever. Yeah. But I did when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, you've been hey, I just had an idea, by the way. What? Um, beep, 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 bop, boop, bop. Uh, what's my idea? Hey, so remember way back at the beginning of the podcast? Way back when? We had the idea of making an episode where it was the, like, like we had an episode that was like my my story or whatever oh, and yeah. then we were going to do one that was yours I was wondering when this was going to come back up I had a idea I think we were able to just suffer through mine Yeah but I fucking I th- Trevor gave me this idea I think shout out to Trevor Oh really Um Hi Trevor I don't know how or but I think I absorbed that from that universe but from the Trevor universe? Yeah, from something to do with Trevor or Bullpup. But we should bring in a third person to guest host and no, have you, you already, be the subject. You already talked to me about this idea, I think on a different episode, and oh. you said that we should have Trevor do it. We should, I did? Yeah. That's well, why you're thinking of Trevor that's right my now. idea again. <laughs> I'm bringing it back. You and Trevor could interview me. That'd be yep. kind of fun. Yeah. Weird. Trevor would do that. Well, uh, you know what would be funny is if we don't ask, we just don't even ask him, but we just let this air, so he hears it, and then <laughs> and then wait hit for us the up, message, <laughs> and then and then we'll be like, all right, let's do it. This will be that us asking. This will be us letting. <laughs> that feels rude. I know we probably won't actually, but that would be funny. No, we're probably um, gonna forget that we did this, and then he's gonna message us and be like, hey. Yeah. 
<laughs> yep. Um, so, yeah. I should get gas now. Do, yeah, do get gas Because I'm going to be really stressed out if I have to not get gas. I hope I have gas in my car. I forgot about We that. could check and do that, too. Uh, because do you have work, right? I tomorrow? do have work tomorrow. Okay. So we'll we'll take care of that. Make sure you're good. Uh, <sighs> I was going to say, there's another idea that I had just now. If I forget what it was. Whatever, I guess. Baller move. Baller move. Uh, you know what I did to myself the past what? like few months? I started saying baller, ironically. Like, for some reason... Like, I just, like, baller, like, like as a joke. Yeah. And now I say it every day. You do. You do say it a lot. And not as, and I'm never joking. <laughs> I'm being serious when I say it. Baller move. Baller. Yeah, that's baller, dude. <laughs> like, what the fuck am I doing? I recently Is this started... 2000 fucking seven? Am I serious? <laughs> I recently started a new, like, mental tick. I saw okay. this, um, this TikTok that was, like... This girl was like, whenever anything happens to me, I just think, fuck it, we ball. And it was just a bunch of I love incidents that. of things happening and her being like, fuck <laughs> it, we ball. That's and now good. anytime anything happens in my head, I'm just like, fuck it, we ball. <laughs> but I never say it out loud. I just have a moment where my face probably goes blank to the third party viewer. And I'm just thinking that, but you can't tell that I'm We're adding that. that to our lexicon. Fuck it, We're we throwing ball. that in. We're adding that. I said it a couple times recently and you just went baller and neither of us talked about it again. Yeah, like see, that's because that I'm happened. still, because I'm doing that, and I can't stop. I like when we have this, like, ADHD echolalia, where I say something fucking dumb, and you say something kind of similar, it's also fucking dumb, we both think about the thing we said, and then forget that we both said it. Yeah. Or, like, earlier when I was singing Rasputin, and I swear to God, you were singing that earlier in the day, and I asked you if you said, were singing it earlier, and you said no, but I think you were at the museum. I really don't think I was. You were, for sure. You said you started Rasputin. singing it. I hadn't thought about that song in like a while. I I really truly don't think that happened. I think you maybe were someone it. at the museum was said it said something about Rasputin. Nope. Did you see like some type of Romanov reference that made you think of nope. Rasputin? Nope. Hmm. Nope. You were singing it. Ra ra Rasputin. La, Dude, ra, I think we should get a Rasputin. studio this year. You just said that because we drove by this piece of shit punk ass building that I used to have a studio at. Fucking hate that place. You know, I'll never be able to rent there again. Not if you don't chill out. No, dude. <laughs> if you bring that kind of attitude. Literally, trust me. Like, trust me. Those people and specific. I'm not saying the population of the building. I'm saying the building manager and the building owner, the mm. maintenance guy. Those people fucking hate me. They might not be the same people though. COVID I, have, I actually, re I check every once in a while because I yearn to be able to rent there again. And that really person, nice. the people still work there. Damn. And it's owned by the same person. Damn. It's a very, it's a, it's a deep regret. Fuck it, but we ball. fuck that place. Fuck it, we ball. Fuck it, we ball. Fuck it, we ball. Ruining connections <laughs> permanently, Maybe irreparably. I could, I could Fucking up my reputation. I will rent there and you'll just come with me. Fuck that place, man. Fuck it, we ball. Fuck it, we um, ball. But, but no, I really think <laughs> since we can't afford um, an apartment, we should just get a studio. That's... Fuck uh, it, we ball. Fuck it, we ball. Uh, I've been organizing my paintings again. Uh, just trying to catalog and archive everything. Yeah. Because that was a project I was working on last fall. Yeah. That I uh, ADHD oh, yeah. brained and let it fall to the wayside and did not complete it. I think because my cataloging system was just completely flawed and not working. And I realized halfway through that my reference system and the way I was titling everything and trying to categorize things was not working. Interesting. And was... What was wrong with it? I was just basically writing in a notebook. I would write down some made up random title for a painting. Like I'd look at it and I'd be like, guy with teeth with blue. And then I would write that weird title on the back of the canvas and then, and oh, then there put was it no away. Image to go with it. But there was no, yeah, like it was just so confusing. Yeah. I was like, this is a stupid fucking system. 
and I, this isn't working. I don't know what to do now. You should make the same exact thing, but make it an Excel spreadsheet with images attached. The thing is, I have like literally like 1,000 fucking paintings. Well, they don't have to be high quality images, just like a cell pic so that you can see it and know what it is. I know, but it's just very, very, very overwhelming. It is very labor intensive to do. So, hey, my sticker's still in that trash can. Oh, nice. <laughs> Super only, fuck you. It's all super only. Super only? Get fucked, 5.30 a gallon. Did you see that? Somebody found a dollar ninety-five of gas and left. Yeah, because they probably went, whoa, fuck, super only? No. <laughs> they got like less than a quarter of a gallon. Do you think they ran out of regular gas because it's only four bucks here? Yeah, that could be it. They ran out of fucking gas. Dude, Fuck. Sometimes I forget that we're in a global crisis. We're in like a global like supply chain recession. Markets are fucking crashing down. Everyone's dying. That's my favorite thing about being an artist. It's like the entire world's been going to shit for like longer than this, but like three years dramatically. And I'm just like, how can I get rich from paintings? <laughs> <laughs> what can what I, I paint and make cool? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. I'm gonna change the world with my pictures. Yeah. Yep. But I really think that. I will. Yeah, I'm f I'm fucking... I'm straight up fucked in the head. <laughs> and I believe that. Same. And you know what? If if other people don't, I don't, I don't even fucking care. Because you believe me, I believe me, and maybe the our listeners believe us. Maybe it's you like... You better believe in us, home homies. Ew, 618 a gallon. No, it isn't really. Oh, oh no, that's that that's one. that's like plus or you, whatever. You four ninety five. No, you're looking at the diesel price. Still. <laughs> Why? Twenty cents more expensive. Dude. I sent you money on Venmo for gas today though, because we've been driving that around. That doesn't a bunch. make it better. You have like a little bit of free gas. That does look Not better. really. I used the gas that I had, <laughs> and you Venmoed me. <laughs> that's pretty, That's the same. You're, you have to move the starting mark, and it feels better. No, so I'm not actually complaining. I'm being dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Are you still recording? Yeah. Yeah, it's still going. It's okay. Don't don't mind the dead air. I'm just looking at my phone real quick. Uh. They don't care about the dead air. They probably do. They probably just heard an ad. You know what I found out about the ads that are placed in our episodes? What? Is that they, the ads uh, 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 are automated. Like the ad placement is automated in a way that it detects silence in the episodes and tries to put the ad into the silence. Damn. Well, so, this is doing a very good job. Sometimes it's in the middle of my sentence. But the problem is, is it's actually a problem on my part as the editor because I actually found out a little bit of podcast engineering information that podcast producers actually uh, splice in small, silent little interludes that aren't really noticeable to the listener when there aren't ads, mm -hmm. but for static ad placement oh. to, 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 yeah, to you, to, to guide the automation into putting the ad into that little silent spot. Huh. So I might try to see if I can be, if I'm, if I'm smart enough to do that. I'm learning how to be a better podcast producer so that I can live up I think you do a great to the, job. to the whole idea. <sighs> beep, 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 pop, boop. Gotta check my bank account. Make sure I'm not about to fuck myself. I am fucking stupid. I fucking love podcasting. You know what I realized? I've talked in the past that I said in the past that like, oh, like I'm a fucking idiot. I listen to like 78 hours of podcasting every day. Like, why am I listening to so many podcasts? I'm such a weirdo. Yeah. But people who are like obsessed with like movies and filmmaking and this and that watch only like watch fucking movies all day yeah. and are obsessed with movies and shit so they can know more about movies and be better at it yeah. so if i really want to give a fuck about podcasting and be serious about this shit maybe i got it maybe i should be listening to even more yeah maybe i should listen to more podcasts i think you're doing a great job 
You're doing a great job. Thanks. My credit score went up. Yo, kick ass. High five. I high five you every time you tell me that. I'm really proud of it. I've been working so hard. Dude, that's a fucking beautiful ass credit score. It's still like... It's looking so fucking good. It's still in the poor range, but it's 200 points higher than it was last year. Dude, that's a fucking big deal. And you're killing it. I'm seven points away from fair credit. Dude, that's fucking awesome. You're killing it. Thank you so much. All right, I'm going to pump the gas. Do you want to fucking hold this? I'm going to do another gas station monologue. Yeah, go ahead. This is a 40-minute recording, and we already recorded a shit ton earlier. Yeah, this is this is good. We could even shut that off, and it would it would be a, an acceptable episode length. Damn. So, we're in, we're in overtime right now, and it's okay to shut it off if you want. But maybe I want a monologue. Maybe I uh, want to talk to the... Uh, sorry, stop. Ahead. Dude, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't mean to burp when you talk. I don't know why it happens. <laughs> <laughs> ah, it's fine. Wait, there's a fucking radio playing. Do you think that's going to fucking get us fucked up again? I don't Do get I have it. to take that seriously now? Mm, it's just ads right now. Just don't let it play a song. I won't let it. Don't play let it. Song. I'll make it not, dude. <laughs> All right. Um, what should we talk about? Welcome to Theo Hour, where I talk about whatever the fuck I want. Um, so I'm just looking at my credit karma right now, and I feel like that's all I can think about. I'm really into um, trying to fix my credit score. I've been working on it for a long time. Because I realized very late in the game that that shit matters. That's not true. I had a really good credit score for a really long time. And then I was in a bad... Uh, I, just, I just fucked up real bad for like six months. And it ruined everything. And I've been working on it for years since then. And now it's starting to look really good. Because I've been working really hard on it. And it's like my hobby at this point. It's just really fucking working on my credit. This is really boring. I'm sorry about that. Um, um, but, 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 but yeah, I don't know if anybody else checks their credit karma every single morning, and like, like strategically pays their credit cards at the time that would show up on their credit card statement, and like opens new cards and then doesn't use them just to raise their credit limit, and like specifically pays on bills in payment plan that will make your credit score like the best. But I do that. It's like my, my favorite hobby. Um, do, 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 do. I don't know what to talk about right now. I'm having a hard time. It's because I'm on my phone. But we've been recording for many, many hours. I just made the worst monologue ever. I was just talking about my credit <laughs> score. Saying? I was just talking about my credit score oh, the whole good time. Job. Yeah, thanks. Um, Thank you. You're so supportive. Yeah, of course. Why? Yeah, of course I am. I'm so duh. supportive. Fuck Fucking yeah. duh. Fuck yeah, I'm sick. Hey, since you're so supportive and you love... No. What do you want? Nothing, never mind. It's 901. What do you want? I want to go to Dairy Queen. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, fuck. Second like right, day wait, in a row. Let's brainstorm. We could get, you could get a Frosty at Wendy's. You like yeah. Frosties. Yeah. No, I'm not feeling it. No, it might be good. I want that. Yeah? Yes. All right, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Do they have soft serve ice cream at McDonald's? Probably broken. It's they always broken. They always say that they don't. They just, it's not even worth asking them because they just lie. They just lie? I mean, right? They just, that's what they say every time. Yeah, they respect true. it. They don't want to clean the whole fucking thing out. It's probably a pain in the ass, but. Yeah, it's true. But still, like, you know, I don't know. It's like. Da 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 our, our, our comp- overhauling our episode title strategy. Really? Where I have noticed in our analytics the episodes with the most plays out of all of them have title. Like, what is authenticity? Did really good. Um, what else did? Uh, how to promote without being a terrible person? Did really good. Whatever. Like, these titles that are either questions or or erudite or, or however you say that word uh, linguistic packaging peanuts that one did good 
but the episodes that do the worst, not bad. Like they all get like the same, a similar range, mm. but the ones that are just someone's name. Like even when you go back in our catalog, like Lauren Cavalcante printmaking, great episode from the catalog. Go listen to that if you haven't. That was an awesome one. But that one had the added added onto the title printmaking and blah blah. You know what I'm saying? And I uh, feel like it gives, like I feel like when there's a little bit more context. Yeah. Like I feel like I tried to do that. No, none of that weird shit where you add. Like I'm not gonna add a bunch of stuff to the title. I'm gonna just make it the artist's name, make it dignified. Like we don't need anything else. Just fucking. It's just the Joe fucking Smith episode. Careful of this car. Yeah. We're what is this fucking shit. idiot doing, man? Um. But you know what I mean. Like that was my thought process at first. Yeah. But I'm kind of. Starting maybe them like I think it is smarter to add some little taglines like because tag. yeah because it tells the listener like when they're scrolling do down the database what the episode's about right it's yeah. like a thesis statement yeah because like some people for like example an abstract of the article yeah like I'm, a person might not want to listen to like maybe they're not in the mood to hear about like like tattoo shit yeah and they want to hear about like painting or maybe they're looking for something on the ceramic vibe or maybe. Uh, episode that's a queer person yeah rather than x y and z you know what i'm saying like maybe there's some way we could give some uh, little give a little more old, depth i think a little I, snapshot i i am really hesitant though to retroactively edit things i think titles are fine it's not you changing think the episode it's, uh, at all acceptable to retroactively edit titles yeah Fuck it. Okay, you know what I added? Fuck to it, we ball. I, <laughs> I changed the title to the Ragnar Kjartansson episode and just put in parentheses at the end of it, review, because it has like, like over, like it has like a thousand more plays than everything else. <laughs> and I think it's because people think that it's the real uh, album of that performance <laughs> Did all museum of the piece. plays stop after like three seconds? Yeah. <laughs> like it has a fucking ridiculous, ridiculously more plays than everything else. And the worst retention oh. out of every fucking episode. We need to do more museum reviews. Like really our, fun. our listeners probably listen to it, but random people who are like, "Oh fuck yeah, that's on Spotify! I love that exhibit." <laughs> and then it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> the voices of disappointment. For real though, that fucking guy like is like a musician publishing his like songwriting but just doesn't put it on anything. Like, it's like, he's a musician that only has his music in museums. Good for him. Like, I mean, that's... That's a niche aesthetic. That's fucking crazy, dude. Like, it's insane that that guy even has... How the fuck did he do it? I don't know. Well, he... We did a little bit of research on him, and he's a pretty well-established performance artist, like, with a large reputation. You know, he's... You know, whatever. Kind of like what we talked about in the episode earlier. Like... It's actually similar to what we talked about in the... He's actually a good example of that, where he's somebody that literally doesn't have an Instagram account, Mm. doesn't have any social media, anything. His music that he is known for isn't even on anything. Yeah. There's, like, rips of it on YouTube, like, low-quality bootlegs of of that that, uh, uh, contemporary art uh, ICA thing. It's pretty wild. Yeah, how, like, how? What the fuck is going on? What the fuck is going on with those types of people? Did my windshield just make a sound when you pushed on it with your feet? Yeah. Am I crazy? Did I imagine that? No, it did that. It's probably fine. Did I? No. Don't worry about it. Just I took my feet down. <laughs> relax. It's, it's all good. Fuck um, it. it's a really long line to wait in for ice cream. Wendy's is always a long line. But I just want one little thing. It'll move. It's okay. I'll fucking wait. We're fucking doing, a, doing an episode. I'm very mentally exhausted for this. Oh, you don't want to do it anymore? I don't know. Why? I like it. It's been hours. I like. I only want to do this. Hours and hours. This is the only thing I like. Guys, I'm being held captive by Brian. I didn't. I don't consent to being on this podcast anymore. They said that if I don't record with them anymore, they're gonna kill me. (laughs) Don't tell them that. I'm cutting all of that out. That's not even going in the episode. The listeners aren't even gonna know that. See, now you know it's true. They're not gonna hear anything you're saying. I'm just kidding. Don't fucking tell them that. <laughs> this is an audio only podcast, so you can't see my fucking gun. <laughs> Shut up! You can't say that. We're in America. I'm just kidding. I have a Jesus license Christ. for it. Shut I'm just kidding. I don't Shut know. up. 
<laughs> You're being scary now, and I just want an ice cream I'm cup. I'm just kidding. I don't want a soft serve ice scary. cream, the chocolate really... dip. No, I don't Where think you're being scary. A, can you, like, is DQ really closed? Yeah, they close at 9. Fucking scumbags. It's scumbags! Some, it's the middle of June. Bump it up to 11, guys. It's like a school night. Yeah. No, it's June! Maybe Winter solstice happened. Maybe they're in summer Go school. Go skateboarding day happened. Go skateboarding day happened. All it's the summer. kids are out of school. <laughs> Isn't that true? Isn't, like, it pretty much... Most of the schools are out or whatever. I don't fucking know. I didn't go I don't to school. Know anything about fucking you. you literally didn't. <laughs> I don't go to school. know when school ends. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm literally not kidding. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be such a douchebag about that too. It would be like I didn't May. Go to school. No, not that. <laughs> I don't care. I would be like May and my friends would still be in school and I'd be like, oh, sorry, can't relate. I'm not in kid jail. <laughs> you used like, to say that? Yeah. I'm not in kid jail. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You know what's kind of funny? As the podcast grows, I wonder if we will eventually cultivate like a, a, like a homeschool adjacent <laughs> audience. That'd be weird. Like people who maybe, maybe they just know about it. And so that, so they like relate to you. It could be a they homeschooling think like, celebrity. Like they're, they're like, hell yeah, I like Theo. I'm fucking into homeschooling. So they like, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so they like tune in because of that vibe. I wonder if my public image is like pro homeschooling. I think only with the podcast. I think if you don't listen to the podcast, the people... All, I think our listeners would know that because you've talked about it, but I think just any some person who follows your art wouldn't know because you yeah. never like say anything about it online. I think about this all the time, but I had one job like a couple years ago where I had this coworker who I talked to. He used to talk to me like I told you the story already, but this one coworker who used to talk to me like every couple of days. It was a big place, so we like would see each other every couple of days because um, he wasn't in the same department as me, but we would kind of loiter in the same areas and we would have conversations about like art and shit. Mm-hmm. And he was like, "Fine, we make small talk." And one time, after knowing him for, like, a year, I mentioned to him that I was homeschooled because he asked me something about high school or whatever, and I was just like, oh, you know, whatever. And he was like, oh, that's cool. And he was, like, totally chill about it. And then I found out he was talking about me to another person who I became friends with later on, and he referred to me not by my name or, like, any descriptors about me or, like, what job I worked or anything. I'm, like, 23 at this point. And he goes, you know, the homeschooled girl? Oh, my God. (laughs) And the person obviously didn't know that about me. It was like, what are you talking about? Like, a, a child? And he's like, no, the girl that works here that's homeschooled. And they're like, currently? And he's like, no. <laughs> Still? Really? <laughs> Interesting. It's like, imagine doing that as somebody just being like, you know, the guy from fucking charter school. <laughs> oh, yeah, that fucking private school guy. <laughs> yeah, like, what, bro? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, anyway, he got dude. fired for misconduct. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Don't let, oh. Whoa, um, did you know you can get a fucking 50 piece nugget from Wendy's? That's a crazy that bro. 50 piece nugget. That's some sleepover shit. Dude, that's like depression order. Like, that's like. No, I'm, no, no, no. That's I'm like about a. to jump off a fucking bridge order. <laughs> uh, no! I'm that's sorry. like for a I'm sleepover. Like, that's okay. like you hang out with your cute. friends watching okay. movies and your mom comes home with a 50 piece nugget. I was imagining myself showing up here at 2 a.m. and ordering that alone and then crying while I eat it. I'm telling you, dude, I said this to you earlier off the air, but you're being wicked fucking negative today. Am I really? You are. Shit. Sorry. (laughs) We're driving and you're just like unalive to a random person. (sighs) On the air, mind you. That was on the air. That was on the air and you're not going to edit it out probably. (laughs) Is that that bad? Yeah. (laughs) Yes, it is. Okay. I I take, I, I take, this is my public apology. I'm sorry. That probably isn't the right thing to say. say that. That's not funny. <laughs> um, what the fuck? Hey, stop and shop gas is cheap. Uh, no, I think that's one of those fake that's lying. You need a stop and shop card to get They're their free. cheap price. Stop and shop cards are free. Yeah, but I don't fucking have one. Just go to the counter and ask for one. <laughs> no. I every time any store clerk says, "All right, so do you want to get like you want to sign up for this thing?" I'm like, "No. No, 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 no." I have like 3. No. Of them. No. It stresses me out. Because, like, one time when I was, like, 18 or something, like, I was just a dumbass. And I was at Home Depot. And the lady at the counter was asking me to sign up for a Home Depot card. And I thought that it was, like, just one of those stupid, like, 
card things. Oh, and there's but a, it was credit, a card? credit card. Yeah, they don't tell I you like sometimes. I like halfway through signing up for it before I realized that I was signing up for a credit card. It's I was like, why like, am I giving you my social like, Why lady? do you need my routing number at my bank? Anyway, <laughs> or whatever the fuck. What do you want? I want ice cream. Okay. That's it. Like a medium vanilla frosty? Chocolate. You want chocolate? Can I do a twist? Is that a thing? I don't know. Ask. I will. I love you. I love you. <sighs> Can you buy one nugget? Probably not. Why not? <laughs> they, they Imagine if they sold nuggets the way that Dunk sells munchkins. Sorry, I'll be right with you. No problem. Like in like a little bucket? No, where you could just buy one for like 59 cents. You can buy one munchkin? Hell yeah. That's a weirdo move. I've done that. You bought one munchkin before? What do you have to do with one munchkin? Just take a little bite? You know what I actually <laughs> did? This is such a shitbag story. But I think I was at a Dunks where you couldn't use the bathroom unless you were a customer. And you bought one? So I bought a munchkin so I could use the bathroom. <laughs> That's a very Brian thing to do. And they were like, all right. Fine, douchebag. Yeah, it was like, it was like really uncomfortable. <laughs> See, this is what I mean, like what we were talking about earlier. Hi, um, do you guys do uh, uh, a Frosty, but it's vanilla and chocolate? Um, my Frosties are now chocolate and strawberry. Oh, you only have chocolate and strawberry? Chocolate yeah. then. Okay, could I have a medium chocolate Frosty? Anything else? No, thank you. That's all? Yep. going to be 277, drop up, please. Thanks. She's like, that's really the only thing you came here for. That's it. You just fucking waited here and wasted my fucking time just so you could buy something for three dollars. <laughs> you fucking asshole. She probably doesn't care. I feel like if you're being paid hourly, the way I've always thought about it is like, I'm here anyway, so do whatever you want as long as you're not a dickhead. Oh, should I hit this pole with a sticker? I can't. This is too, Did you hear the part personal. where I said? <laughs> no, I'm not gonna do that pole. There's a sticker on it, but there's no way they're not gonna see me. So also, your stickers are. That's okay. Hi. Hi. There you go. Thank you. Here you go. Thanks. Yay! There you go. Thanks. Oh, that's for a spoon, too. You want a spoon? Yes, please. <laughs> <clears throat> you're the best. Hey, can I get a spoon, too? We actually don't have oh, any spoons. I can offer you a fork. Okay. That's fine. <laughs> Thanks. Good night. You're welcome. She's really a, nice. It's a fork and a knife. <laughs> Eat them with a knife. Why don't they have spoons? That's odd. They must have run out. They usually do. Huh. With like chili and stuff. <laughs> they don't have fucking chili at Wendy's. They absolutely do because that's the only thing my papa gets. Your papa eats ch Wendy's chili? Yeah. Hey, whatever. It is weird. There's an like, ass for every seat, I guess. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Damn, 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 damn. Alright, um. Or wrap this one? Maybe, yeah. Cap this one off. It might be time. Got two in the bag, two in the chamber, ready to go out. Got to schedule more interviews, guys. Mm. Anybody listening? Um, I don't know. <laughs> what do we do? Reach out to us if you want to be on the fucking podcast. Yo, you know if you what? are interesting and can talk, we will literally talk to you, probably. The hard, maybe. That, I'm going to tell everybody yes, and then that, if I don't answer you, I don't answer you. That's a hard maybe. Fill out the no, form. No, most people. Hit up the link tree, fill out the form. We love the submissions. We get a lot of good ones, but sometimes the submissions are just fucking fucked, man. <laughs> Can I talk about the one we got this week? You think it's fine? Don't be too specific, but yeah. I mean, I, I don't fucking care. So we got this this suggestion. <laughs> This person applied for our form and they filled out this thing and we have this thing where it's like we ask some questions and it's like what's your name? What do you do? Are you from Boston? Like it's is, very general. Yeah, very, and then very light. the last question is is there anything else you want us to know about you? And it's supposed to be like just your demographics and then you do your little elevator pitch or, or whatever. Like what you, whatever. Yeah, and just like kind of so that we can kind of know who you are a little bit and like obviously we answer DMs too, but it's just like a nice streamlined way to do it. Um, it's a little survey monkey thing. And this person fucking, <laughs> they signed on to it. And it was one of my favorite ones we've ever gotten because they sent us their name. And it's like, what do you do? And it was like a one word response. I'm not going to say what it was because it's very specific, but just picture a title of a thing that you could do. And uh, they're like, you live in Boston? Yes. Are you an artist? Yes. Is there anything else you want us to know about you? Nope. That's it. Submit. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, 
<laughs> you know what I said? And I, it, it was very similar. I don't know if anyone else has this experience, but one time when I was like 15, my mom like dragged me into a McDonald's by my ear and made me apply because <laughs> she was trying to make me get a job. <laughs> and I like basically filled out the shittiest, most low effort job application ever. Or I might as well have just like sent in a blank one. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. I got the job too, and I worked there for like two weeks, and then I quit. Did you put in a notice? No, I just fucking quit. <laughs> it was because I was unbelievably bad at it. It was giving me horrible anxiety. I was completely unteachable, and yeah, I just was not capable of, of having a job at McDonald's. <laughs> I just really couldn't handle it. Was this around the same time that you got in that guy's car? No, this is like a year later, probably. <laughs> probably less than a year. Maybe a few months after that experience. <laughs> really funny. <laughs> yeah. Probably like the winter after that. Yeah, because I think I was like four or five months sober when that ordeal happened where my mom made me. So I wasn't 15, I was 16. But yeah, so. Yeah. <laughs> You're four months sober Pretty, working at McDonald's. I mean, Damn. that's not a bad situation at four months sober. But that's true. I was incapable of doing that. I was in high school... I did not even understand the meaning of work ethic. Mm. I did not understand anything. I just wanted to smoke cigarettes, read books, badly play guitar. No. And, yep, that's <laughs> all I could do at that time. <laughs> that was all I had. <laughs> what was I doing when I was 16? I don't even know. I think that was 16. Oh, I had a boyfriend who was 24. Um, and I also had a fandom fashion blog where I would go on online comics, pick my favorite characters, and pick designer outfits that I would make on Polyvore, screenshot them, and then put them on this Tumblr blog. Love that. Those are the two big things I had going on in my life. Well, you could see the TV in the window of that funeral home. They're watching They're an watching eyebrow a... threading ad. That was really weird. I always forget that people live in the upstairs of the funeral home. That would be so scary. Well, I think the people who live there are affiliated with the business. Yeah, they're probably not that so afraid of corpses. They're probably like, yeah, whatever. So, are there bodies in a funeral home all the time? That is a question that I don't know. That's definitely true in movies. I, I believe the movies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, do you want to watch a movie tonight? It depends what movie. It's my turn to pick. Fuck. It, it is. Rude. Shit. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. We pink. stayed up till 2 in the morning watching your movie last time. Right, it was well, a good movie. We're, this is a new thing we're doing where because we <laughs> all of the shows that we really like to watch are in between seasons or, or are over or whatever. Yeah. So we're intentionally not starting a new show and we're trying to temporarily only watch movies. Because we got away from movies, man. We yeah. just don't watch movies. I mean, I don't watch movies ever. So. Sometimes you just need a deep one shot. Like two hours yeah. in one little universe. You just need one. Yeah. Like sometimes, you sh maybe you shouldn't watch, you know, 95 hours of something. Yeah. Maybe not. One thing about us that I think is really funny, that maybe the people that know us in real life know, but yeah. actually, now that I think about it, maybe nobody knows this about us. What is it? <laughs> that the same intensity that we apply to, like, art projects and stuff, where we'll just, like, go, like balls deep on some like random project <laughs> what was that weird when you say that that's just funny <laughs> I'm just like all in on something like hyper obsessive like no sleep fucking focused for like three weeks is uh -huh. also how we watch TV yeah. like we'll just disappear for like three days and my family doesn't know where I am yeah. and we're just in your room watching Riverdale we're like we have to know what happens who is the black hood we have to fucking know staying up to like two we in the morning we can't stop <laughs> Oh my god. I haven't peed in days! <laughs> Not true. We pee between every episode. That's true. You also. got a pee break. Yeah. yeah. I also pee every time I eat, right before I eat. It's true. It's a, It's like literally without fail, every time you eat, you go pee. To the point where now when we cook, I'll be like so focused on cooking, and then we'll be almost done, and Brian will be like, go pee, you have to pee. And I'm like, oh, I do. <laughs> and then we eat dinner. And then we eat. <laughs> Um, <sighs> shit, dude. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna pick a movie. Because we're trying Better this new thing where we suck. take turns. Shut up! <laughs>
We've only done two. We watched Les, Les Mis, mm-hmm. or Les Miserable, or whatever the fuck it is. <laughs> and then we watched... You watched Les Miserables for the first time in 2022. I had never seen it. Shocking to me. And then we watched... My pick was The Big Short. You complained to me that I only pick... <laughs> uh, Blue-tinted boy movies. Blue-tinted boy movies about money and guns. <laughs> and it's true. I do like that kind of movie. The I, thing will, that I, think I admit it. The reason that's what I like. I get a kick out of myself, though, because the thing that's funny about that is I can't even name any examples of a time you've made me watch a movie like that. But I, when I'm alone... And the big short doesn't apply to that either. The bl- big short's close to that. It just doesn't feature guns. It is, mm-hmm. it is in the category of blue-tinted money movie. It isn't a boy movie, though. For anybody who has no idea what I'm talking about, I mean like Ozark, Wolf of Wall Street, I don't know, Peaky my, Blinders. My favorite I like thing. that shit. Cut me a fucking break. My favorite thing to do lately is unnecessarily like, gender things. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. I like some stereotypically <laughs> gendered things. Mm. It's all right. I'm okay with it. Yeah. I like it. I like a shoot 'em up, jump through the wall while shooting a gun, like jump the shark type shit. You know I'm what's a really it. good one that isn't necessarily a boy movie? Um, the Mad Max that came out in like 2014 or whatever. That's a good example. Good yeah. fucking movie. I actually haven't even seen it. You haven't seen it? The newer Mad Max from like 2017 or whatever. I love that shit. I just straight ship. up missed it. So good. I fucking love that movie. Isn't there a guy that is addicted to a, like huffing spray paint in that movie? Um, it's not just one guy. It's they a bunch of it. them. And they're not necessarily huffing. It's like a thing they do before they go into battle. Like they spray paint their face silver. Can you imagine doing that? Well, I mean, in, like, post-apocalypse, it's probably not that bad. You know what I did one time when I was, like, 12? What? I just stabbed uh, a spray paint can with a knife, and it sprayed, like, all over my face and hands and shirt. The more we talk about you as a teenager, the less surprised I am that you weren't into Les Miserables. <laughs> Why would, that's like a theater kid thing. I was like not even... I like, was a theater kid. I was associated... I wasn't a theater kid, but I was. Kids. Like I knew the theater kids, but I wasn't like walking in the hall singing and shit. I probably would have been a theater kid if I went to school. Surely, yeah. I'd, I'd, I could see that. I didn't go to school, so I didn't do that, but I was friends with a lot of theater kids. I I was originally hung out with like drugs kids, like smoke in the bathroom drug people. Mm-hmm. And then after I stopped doing that, I didn't know where to land, so I I just became friends with the anime people. Oh. And I was like a, I was like chilling at the Naruto headband lunch table. No, no, with love and respect, obviously. So the anime I, do, kids... I don't really watch anime personally, but that was my crew. I wasn't, I didn't watch anime either, but I was always friends with like D&D kids and anime kids because a lot of other kids, like it's not really that big of a deal now as an adult. Like that story I just told about that guy who was weird about it. That guy's an outlier. Like most people don't give a fuck that you were homeschooled or they think it's like funny if they do. But when you're a teenager, people are dicks about it. And there are a lot of kids that are like quote unquote normal kids that just won't even talk to you because they think you're a freak just Mm -hmm. because they know you're homeschooled. Yeah. So, anime kids will hang out with you. <laughs> Dude, yeah, anime kids are, like, the most accepting. Because anime kid at the time was code for, like, this is the gay table. Yeah. Everybody here is bisexual. That's true. I was, also, I was also a little queer kid. Yeah. It was, like, the GSA group. The anime club. There was no GSA club anymore. There was just the anime club. <laughs> anime gays. Nice. All right. Has this, has this one reached its conclusion, you think? Yeah, this sucks. Let's go watch a movie. All right. Wow, this is like accidentally a long one. When I was hoping that we would be able to just piece together three separate 20-minute recordings. This is going to be like an hour, two hours long. Yeah, this is just it. actually a long-ass one. So, nice. yo, you know what would be a psychotic pivot for the show? We that we probably hour live stream. That would be fucked. But <laughs> we'll probably never do this, but can you imagine if the day came where we just said, fuck it, no guests? Ever again? Yeah, we just said fuck guests. No more guests. No, I like guests. I do too, but like, I imagine. What would our show be like? It would probably be significantly harder to create. It would be like how it was before we had guests. We did that for a while. But I'm talking about leaning in. Oh. I'm not talking about we kind of felt bad about the fact that we didn't have guests. Mm -hmm. Whatever. All right, guys. Thank you for listening. Fuck it, we ball. Here's Theo. Fuck it, we ball. Here's Theo. Here's Theo's piano outro. 
You have a piano outro on every episode now. I have a piano outro? Yeah, it's like really beautiful piano music that starts playing. It's playing right now while we're talking. And then when we're done talking, it's going to have you say the outro. Oh, I thought you meant that I was playing piano. I was like, I don't know how to do that. No. When did I do that for you? Nope, it's just a garage band loop. Oh, nice. Hell yeah. All right, bye guys. Bye. Boston Art Podcast is an independent DIY production by Brian Huntress and Theodora Earthworms. The information contained in this episode represents the views and opinions of the original creators or our guests, and does not represent any institution, organization, or business. Find us on Instagram at Boston Art Podcast, and tune in for a new episode every Friday. Thank you for listening.